Hi everyone, Paul from Tuscan Tour Guide. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, there's a new episode on animals and their messages in all paintings and uh, frescoes that we find in Florence. It's just a, select, a selected few, but uh, while I give you the intro, let me introduce you to my little animal, one of the three that I have here in the house. Her name is Poppy. She's pretty cool. Uh, she's actually usually by herself, hanging out uh, on a bed or chasing birds and uh, and, and lizards down in the backyard. So uh, I want to thank everybody for following, tuning in, subscribing. Make sure you click on the button down here. Uh, make sure you that if you enjoyed these videos, uh, uh, I thank you for having, uh, for leaving something in my PayPal account. Uh, but let's get to the videos itself. Let's start off with something that we've seen twice already in two of my videos. And you'll find these links on the top right hand side of your screen. Um, if you're watching them from a mobile, you're not going to be seeing them. So I'll put the links down below. Uh, if you have to follow them from a PC in order to see all these links. So here we go, Gentilia da Fabriano. This is in the Uffizi Gallery. We see this all the time when we go. This is some, one of them that I, I always cover. So we're talking about animals and their meanings, but I'm not gonna get into the typical manger ones with the, with the donkey. I want you to focus on this area right over here, which we're gonna see the details right over here. Um, monkeys and a cheetah with a lion, a young lion, and there's a gentleman looking at you straight here. The guy looking at you is the gentleman who paid for the painting, of the richest guy in Florence in 1423 when this painting was made, and he decides, he's a banker, he decides to put two monkeys above his head and the cheetah in the midst of it all just to show how well-traveled he is because we don't have any of these three animals anywhere in Florence in the 1400s. Uh, about 40 years later, this building was made, and this is uh, the Medici Palace that we always walk by in my tour in Florence. And inside it, the Medici's built the first private chapel in Europe. And it's a small room. It's probably bigger, a little bit bigger than your bedroom. And on the four walls of the bedroom, uh, we have the procession of the Magi coming to baby Jesus. And here's Melchior, the eldest of the three Magi on his horse. And obviously this is all representative of the time of the 1400s. So there's nothing really that goes back to the year zero when Jesus was really born. Uh, we have a medieval or Renaissance little looking city up on the, on the hill over here. But there's a duck down below and there's a bull chasing down, looks like a, a feline here, and then there's another, there's a dog chasing a deer, but that, not much about that. What I care about is what's going on down here in the bottom right, besides the camel and the procession that's going on up there. Now, they're all African-looking animals because Melchior was, was believed to be from Africa. But take a look. Another cheetah showing a very well-traveled person, obviously the Medicis, who are commissioning this painting, and... A monkey off on the right, minding his own business, but that's showing you that uh, they're very well. Aware, the Medici's are very well aware of having these animals and that they exist and that they're hard to come by. And this gentleman here, Benozzo Gozzoli, is the guy who painted this fresco in the Medici Chapel. And down below, we have a falcon with its hair and the guts already hanging out because uh, of his uh, his hunt. So once again, showing you that. They have an elite sport called hunting, which they still do. They have monkeys, which are hard to come by. We have cheetahs that very few people are aware of. So it's kind of neat how you have all these different animals in these paintings. Here we have the baptism of Christ from Leonardo da Vinci and Verrocchio. Leonardo supposedly only made this little part over here, this angel's face here. But what we have from the top are the hands of God coming out with the dove, which is the Holy Spirit. So I'm not telling you anything new about these, uh, this animal here. But off on the right, you have this bird that seems to be fleeing away. He just Maybe he got scared from the dove's presence and the hands of God, so he's fleeing away. But take a look at the shape of that bird because we're going to see it here. And this was done by Ghirlandaio in the convent or the monastery of San Marco, not far from the Academy of Fine Arts where the David is. And this was made in a small room for guests to have dinner in. Uh, so not where the monks would have dinner, but where the guests would have dinner. And obviously, appropriately so, they have the 12 disciples having dinner with Jesus for the Last Supper. On one side, we typically have Judas on one side of the table because he's the, the outsider. He's the one who betrayed Jesus. He's the one who wasn't faithful to Jesus. So let's, let's make him stick out like a sore thumb on the opposite side of the table. And next to him, there's an animal. But there are those birds again. So Ghirlandaio and uh, Andrea del Verrocchio and Da Vinci, you know, painting the same birds that you see around Florence. And there's, this, there's also another bird over here. So let's zoom into these two animals here. So first, the one that's next to Judas, which is a cat. Dogs, 
uh, show fidelity to the owner, and cats obviously don't. So being that Judas was unfaithful to Jesus, well, cats are unfaithful to their owners as well, quote-unquote. Uh, not my cats, not my three cats, but here we have uh, a cat. And then up on the window, there's a peacock. Now, peacocks have a very uh, distinct message. Uh, the, the ancient Greeks thought that peacocks were, were the symbol of immortality. And there's a very simple reason for that, because a peacock, when a peacock dies, its skin doesn't decompose very quickly. It takes years to decompose. So the Greeks came up with this theory that they're immortal because it takes them a really, really, really long time to decompose. With that said, and the transition between the Greeks and the Romans and Christianity, during Constantine's time, a lot of paganism was brought into Christianity because that's what most people understood and saw for centuries. So what this peacock was doing is incorporating itself in these Christian paintings showing the immortality of Christ. So in the Last Supper, being that Jesus is going to be, you know, he knows what's going to happen to him, uh, but we also know that he's going to continue living up in heaven. So at the same time, why not include a peacock that represents his immortality. We, we see this again and again in many paintings. Uh, this is one that I love in the Academy of Fine Arts. So before we go see David, we typically stop here. And this was made by Filippino Lippi. Uh, and it, there's a Virgin Mary reading a book, which is all bogus, obviously, because she wasn't that wealthy. And here's the angel Gabriel. And many people don't make out his wings made with peacock feathers. Uh, and there's the dove with the Holy Spirit shining down the Virgin Mary. But the peacock feathers, again, this meant that Filippino Lippi must have had a peacock, well, in his reach to see it uh, properly in order to paint the wings on the angel Gabriel. Again, representing Jesus's immortality, which he hasn't even been conceived yet because the Holy Spirit hasn't gotten to the Virgin Mary yet. So foreshadowings. Another one, this is a great fresco from Ghirlandaio. Uh, in Santa Maria Novella, right across the street from the main train station in Florence. And here there's two animals that I want to point out, that the fresco was obviously ruined here in the middle. So there's, there's baby Jesus' leg and the Virgin Mary with the three magi kneeling, given gifts. Uh, but we have the peacock up here, and we have, we have a giraffe. Now, the giraffe was a big deal in the 1400s. Um, it, it, was a, it was a story that started off with the Medicis. Um, the Medicis were given a gift from the Sultan of Egypt in 1487. 1487, a giraffe came off of a boat in Florence. Uh, the last giraffe that Florence had seen was in the Roman times. Uh, and I'll put a link up here to uh, one of my videos that I was the audio for uh, a Roman Colosseum tour or DVD that was released a few years back. So I'll put that here. You can watch a few minutes of it if you like. But it talks about how these uh, exotic animals were brought on from all over the empire, Egypt and Turkey and Syria, all these foreign countries that the Romans conquered and brought all these exotic animals to Rome, to the Colosseum to have them fight. Uh, so we did have bears and lions and, and giraffes in Florence during the Roman times. They dis when the Roman Empire fell in the year 500, roughly, there were no more giraffes to be seen anywhere in Italy until November 18th, 1487, when the Sultan of Egypt brought this gift to the Medicis. It was a schmooze. They were, he was trying to schmooze them to become allies, which is another story all in itself. But nevertheless, the Florentines, for the first time, see a giraffe walking in Florence. And in turn, the year after... This fresco was made in 1488, and we have a giraffe there. Let me get to the detail of it. Here it is. So we have the giraffe, and obviously Ghirlandaio must have seen it firsthand in order to paint it so precisely and so beautifully. This is a Giorgio Vasari painting. Giorgio Vasari was a very good friend of Cosimo I, um, and Cosimo I... Very, very famous for having uh, remodeled the Palazzo Vecchio, and many of the ceilings had paintings put on it. And this is a, a painting that's put on the ceiling in the Palazzo Vecchio of Lorenzo the Magnificent being uh, you know, adored by different various people coming in, showing uh, him homage. But in the background, check out that, that giraffe again. So even set about 45 years after uh, this uh, giraffe showed up, uh, in Florence, Giorgio Vasari is painting, and there's a couple of camels back there too. So not subliminal messages here, but saying, look at what we have here in Florence that nobody else has seen in a while. This is a great painting from Raphael, again in the Uffizi Gallery. Uh, we have Mary holding a book, and baby Jesus and John the Baptist. This was made by Raphael, 
and given as a gift to his friend uh, Lorenzo Nazi, uh, Nazi and um, in fourteen in the, in fourteen in fifteen o five, about forty five years later, Lorenzo's house came to crumbling down. There was an earthquake and the painting was ruined and broken up to 17 different pieces and you can see all the cracks in there. It stayed like this until about the year 2005 when it went under restoration and when it came out, this is what we got. Everything was fixed. The cracks were concealed with new paint and we obviously know that this was all fixed up so this is not exactly the original painting. But everything looks as if it is original. So now you can make out baby Jesus and the little bird that he's petting that's being held by John the Baptist. Now that little bird is very important, and we see this in a lot of paintings. Again, here's a symbology of it. It's got a red forehead. Uh, this uh, this bird and it, uh, was the bird that supposedly plucked one of the thorns off of Jesus's crown of thorns while he was going to Calvary, um, the goldfinch. So whenever you see a goldfinch in a painting, it's sort of like the same meaning of the, um, uh, another meaning similar to the peacock. The peacock was there symbolizing immortality where the red forehead on the goldfinch represents the blood of Christ where when the bird tried to pluck one of the thorns off of his forehead, not in the Bible, FYI, just for argument's sake. These are all stories that were all made up afterwards. Here we have Guido Baldo. This is in the Pitti Palace uh, you know, on the opposite side of the Ponte Vecchio in Florence. Uh, Guido Baldo was the second, was Duke of Urbino and Bronzino painted this painting. Great painting, but I really don't care about him. Uh, I care about his armor and his helmet showing you that uh, he's, a, he's a hunter and the hunter needs a dog and so he's hugging his dog uh, and petting his dog on the side. Uh, what's going on in between his legs over there showing you that this was done over and over. And if you've been to the Frick Museum in New York, there's another Bronzino painting there. A lot of them, a lot of these guys did this showing that they're, uh, they're good to procreate and have lots of heirs in their family. So that's uh, maybe a, a good point of reference for a new video. This, on the other hand, is Venus, painted by Titian in the Uffizi Gallery, and Guido Baldo purchased this from Titian, and uh, she's inviting us, obviously, to, to, to sleep with her with the roses in her hand, but we care about the dog. Let's get into the detail of it. A dog is very faithful. So the dog is faithful to its owner, like Venus or the girl is faithful to her husband, which is supposed to be Guido Baldo II. So the messages are all there. They're quite simple. They're not complicated. You just have to understand them when you go to a museum and see these paintings. The last one's kind of a funny one, uh, but the Medici's in the Pitti Palace, when they moved to the Pitti Palace and had uh, all these, these servants there, they also had jesters, and they loved having strange-looking animals in their house as well, strange-looking people. So they had five midgets. Now, I know it's not politically correct to say it, but the, the name of this painting is Midget Morgante, because it, the midget's name is Morgante. Um, they pictured him, and Bronzino again made this painting, where he's about to go hunting. So that's an owl, and he's got a rope going behind his back and the rope ends up in Morgante's left hand. There's a bird and there's a couple of uh, butterflies. But on the back of it, this is the same painting, by the way. This is the front and this is the back. So you, can actually, you have to walk around the, entire, the painting because it's, it's, it's placed on a, on, a, on a metal stand so you could walk around it. So here, Nano Morgante is showing you what he's about to do, which is go hunting. And here, the, the hunt has ended because there's the owl, there's his spear, and here is what he's caught. But the most important thing in the front painting is how perfectly, timely speaking, that the scarce swallowtail butterfly fly, it was, was, happened to fly right in front of Nano Morgante's personal spots. So here is uh, the scarce swallowtail. That's the name of the butterfly. They're beautiful. They're very rare in Italy. But this shows you that Bronzino must have seen one and had one readily available on behalf of the Medicis. That's who he's working for to paint this painting. Um, it, it's telling you what they have, how many of they have, how well they are, uh, how, uh, how uh, culturally intellectual they are, what kind of animals they have around, what kind of people they have around. So it's not just about plopping animals in these paintings. It's also about telling you what they know, where they've been, and how wealthy they are. So on this quick video, I hope you liked all my animals. And we talked about 19 of them, believe it or not. It's just really, really quick. Some are obvious and some are a little bit more complicated to understand. But once you get the, understand, the, 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 the symbology behind it, it's kind of neat to find all these animals in these Renaissance paintings in uh, all these museums across the world. 
So once again, I thank you for having followed me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, if you feel that uh, you, you can find something in your heart, uh, if you enjoyed the video, click on, the, on my PayPal account up here that you'll see. Subscribe down on the bottom right-hand side. And I hope to see you next week on a new edition and a new uh, program about wine. But just a heads up, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be doing a 10-minute Facebook Live talk about the David in the Academy. It's still closed. It opens up on June 3rd, supposedly, 2020, uh, but because of the COVID-19. But uh, I'm hoping to go there and do, a, do a, a skit on the David live from the Academy of Fine Arts when it opens. But we have to find out about, we have to find out about restrictions and videoing and all that good stuff. But for the time being, tune in this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a 10-minute Facebook Live talk on the David. Just uh, on your Facebook, make sure you look up Tuscan Tour Guide dash Paul Costa. And at that point, you'll find me, you'll subscribe to my channel and my, uh, my page, and you can follow me on Saturday morning. Hope all is well. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next week on a new video. Take care. Bye-bye.